going on, folks, and welcome back to Four Corners of the Galley. I'm your host, P. Bo, and you're joining me on another edition of our TV reviews. And what are we reviewing? Well, we're breaking down and recapping each episode of the Mayans MC Season 1. We're all the way up to Episode 2, Escorpion. <laughs> all right. So uh, each week we recap and break down the previous episode of the Mayans, uh, give you a little breakdown and prepare for the next one, and then kick you over to it. So I know I'm a little late this week, guys. Sorry, busy week, but I'll be back on schedule this week. So let's recap episode two, as Scorpion. All right, so we catch back up with the Mayans, and we get a continuation exactly where they left us off on the cliffhanger from season one, from episode one, season one, episode one, where at the end of episode one, um, the uh, the little banditos, the rebels, gets a call from the main rebel leader, and she basically tells them, and you know, get the baby, and they sh and the little girl says the rabbit said jump, and that's the last we see of them. Well, a continuation, we find that they've caught up with Emily and her child. And uh, they have the bodyguards on the ground. Uh, they're trying to take the baby from Emily. She's crying. The baby is screaming. And they're basically saying, give up the baby. Emily's being very tough and refusing to give up the baby. She finally gives up her child. Uh, and they take the, the baby. Uh, before they do, they kill one of her bodyguards. She ends up throwing up once she sees her bodyguard getting shot. And they take the baby. And the rebels take the baby in a cloud of dust. And it starts right off where we ended it with some very shocking, shocking stuff. And things that are obviously, this is going to be the center. This, to me, this feels like the centerpiece of this season is the capturing of Emily and Miguel's child. And the recovering of this child. Or the non-recovery of this child and the things that events that are going to occur because of not recovering this child or if they do recover their child the events and things that will happen to make sure that this child is never taken again so i can see that this is this is the big point here this is the big thing for this season i feel like everything's going to swirl around this thing because as we see in this episode all kinds of things change based on the events that happened at the beginning so we catch back up with the Mayans, and the Mayans are out running around, and they're looking for this gang called Dogwood. And we have no idea who Dogwood is, and we don't know what they're doing. They can't find any members of Dogwood for some reason. So they end up, uh, Coco ends up remembering that the leader of the gang, Louie, his baby mama stays above, or his mom stays above, I think a haircut place or something of that nature. So they end up at that house, and Louie's not there, but they come across his son, and you got this little funny moment where the son fake shoots Coco with a gun, but it's really just a pellet gun and gets all, you know, freaked out. But they're asking where his dad is, and the little kid basically tells him, like, look, my dad left. He's afraid that you guys are going to kill him. And he's like, we're going to kill him. We have no idea what the heck's going on. So they end up leaving, and then we're going to catch up with them in a second. But we get this quick little cut-to scene, and we get to see Felipe, uh, Easy and Angel's father, played by Edward James Olmos, and he's having a moment in his kitchen. And he's basically talking to his wife, but as we have found out, his wife is no longer around. So he's still kind of like going through his daily routine where he would talk to his wife, and he's just kind of saying, I'm very happy you're not around to see all this craziness that's going on. So he's still, you know, he's got, he's got a lot of his demons, and he obviously misses his wife, and it's just a nice little sweet moment. So we catch back up with the Mayans, and we go to this place called uh, Wonderland. And Wonderland, or yeah, Wonderland. And Wonderland is a uh, dog veterinarian and they treat dogs there but what it also does is they treat drug addicts so they it's like a drug have re rehabilitation center i guess where you don't get put on the map and they kind of put them in cages and they keep them there so the mines are all walking around they're looking for people because they're looking for different stuff and they uh, you know they give some money to the lady of the veterinarian that runs the whole place and then one of the guys notices that there's a dogwood soldier there and he's getting i guess he's being rehabilitated so they're like hey uh when's uh louis to pick him up he goes oh very soon and it's like a quick edit scene which is kind of weird but it cuts to Louie showing up to pick up his member and he sees the Mayans and he sees them and breaks out and the funny part and the best part about this is uh, the guy playing Louie the Gangster is, is played by Noel uh, who is a very famous uh, actor who basically plays Hector in every single movie he's Hector in Fast and the Furious he's Hector in uh, Bruce Almighty he's he's Hector in Training Day I mean he's Hector in a lot of things but he is your classic movie gangster and he plays it in almost every single movie and he's he's absolutely hilarious and a funny guy so i thought it was great that he's the head gangster of this uh, of this group called dogwood but his name is louis so a chase ensues and they're chasing after louis he ends up crashing his car into a ditch and flipping it over and getting out and the minds are like dude why are you running man what the heck is your problem and he's like look man 
I just want to, first off, Coco, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know. Well, we come to find out, Louis thinks that Coco's younger sister, younger sister, went to go see them. And we're like, well, what do these guys do? Well, these guys are in the smut business and they're making porno videos. So basically they are setting up some videos and making some videos and they make some videos with this young lady only to find out that she's only 16 years old. So they freak out and kick her out. But what they didn't realize, I guess she says she's Coco's little sister. So they were scared out of their minds that they were going to get clipped or he's going to get his stuff cut off because, you know, he let little sister of one of the Mayans uh, be in these videos. So they're like, all right, man, well, you know, we ain't going to kill you, but we're going to double our thing. So I guess right now they're taking 12% of the cut. So they're not only going to take 24% of the cut. And they're like, they're excited. The the uh, dogwood goes about their day and the mines start laughing. They're like, man, that was great. And and he's just like, what the heck happened? And he's like, well, he goes like, man, I, got, I only got older sisters. So I guess at this point, I assumed, at first I thought, damn, that's messed up. And then Coco was like, no, I got older sisters, so... We have no idea who this girl is or anything of this nature because they just basically tricked Dogwood into getting, uh, into getting more money from them. So in the end, the Mayans are happy and it's kind of a funny scene. You get this whole big event that really comes out to nothing. Basically, the Mayans get stuff. It's just kind of like a good starter point, I guess. So that, that was cool. <clears throat> so then we get all that going on and that, that gets taken care of. So <clears throat> there's a, a right after that, you get a big meetup. And the Mayans are basically called to a meetup. And not just all the Mayans, Ma Mayans, all the Mayans, but also the Northern Charter and the Southern Charter. Because so Marcus is brought along and he meets back up with the Mayans. And they're all going out for a big meet with the Calindo G G Cartel, you know, Miguel's Cartel. So they all meet up in the middle of like, you know, it looks like this old Western area. And uh, we get to meet the Constellieri who is play who is uh, actually is uh, Devante. Devante is the conciliary. He's kind of like the Ivy League educated uh, Hispanic man, Mexican man that uh, oversees the Calindo cartel and makes sure that things are all run right. And then we also get to meet his mercenary, uh, Nestor, Nestor, who's, a, who's a, a Sicario slash mercenary slash head of security for the Calindo cartel. And he's there. And Miguel comes out and basically goes up to the mines and tells him like, look, I need a personal favor. My son was taken by these rebels, and I need to find out information, and I need to find my son. So the Mayans understand the severity of the thing. Easy, of course, can't keep his mouth shut. Ask if the, the kid is alive, or, and he says he's alive, so, you know, that he always got to insert something, because, of course, that's easy being easy. We also get a clip of easy remembering something, and we'll get back to that in a second. So they have a full discussion about that. So now the Mayans are tasked with trying to find information from the about where these rebels went and where they took his kid. So Easy starts walking back from the meeting and he's walking up to Angel and he is not happy about any of this. He's just, he's pissed because now he understands what was taken. This is Emily's baby. This is his ex-girl's little baby taken and it's a baby and this is already bugging Easy. And he's pissed because he knows the only reason all this has happened is because of Angel, because Angel's working with the rebels. So you can already see that the Mayans are going to definitely get cut in the hat, going to get, there's going to be either a huge change towards the end where either the, the president of the Southern Charter is going to go along with what Angel and them has been doing and is going to be fine with it, or there's going to be an internal rift between uh, Angel, Coco, Gilly, Easy, and the rest of the Mayans where it's going to cause a big divide in the middle because you got one set working with the rebels while the other guys are just trying to stay clean and be with the Kalindo cartel because they've always worked with them. So you can tell this is going to be bad. So Easy basically tells Angel, like, look, we need to, you need to go see someone because I'm not cool with any of this and this needs to get fixed. Angel's like, look, man, I'll, I'll try to make a meet. We'll, we'll get this where he's like, look, I don't care what you got to do. Just get this right because he's not happy about this. Easy's not happy about any of this situation, what's going on, or what the heck any of this is going on. So Easy leaves and goes and sees his father, actually. And he goes to see his father to go tell to tell him about all the different things that's been going on and how this is just really bugging him and how he's just not happy with anything. And, he, you know, he's trying to keep his head on straight, but he's also in deep too deep because he's dealing with the DEA. So he's got all those different things. So Easy's completely torn in the middle because he wants to help out his brother Angel and he wants to do good by the mines, but he also has got the DEA ties. Now he's got this additional thing where his ex-girlfriend, the woman he loves, Baby, who is with this cartel guy, is now taken by the rebels. I mean, you can already see this man is pulled in like 18 different directions and we're only up to episode two. So there's definitely a lot that's gonna happen from this point forward. So that part is crazy. <clears throat> then we go back 
to the Galindo, uh, Galindo uh, I guess, complex or house. And we meet back up with Miguel, and he's there, and we meet, uh, we, we kick over to them, and they're basically just, you know, they're having a big meeting about everything. Uh, <clears throat> they're meeting about the whole, uh, just what's going on. So Nestor comes back because Devante, the consigliere, and Miguel are having a meeting together, and Nestor comes and tells them, look, we got some information. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Before all that happens, right at the end of the meeting, uh, Nestor goes to uh, Miguel, and he's in the back of the car, and he's like, look, this just posted online. It's already gone viral, and it's a video, and it's a video by the Rebels, and the Rebels created a like a anti-video like like a anti -video of the cartel, and it shows them burning the 12 keys of Coke that Angel ended up giving to them at the end of this whole deal. So they're burning the 12 keys of Coke that they took from them and basically starting an internal war with the Calindo cartel. With, they've already stole the baby. Now they're burning their cocaine, and they put it out to the masses for everyone to see. So now they're making the cartel lose face, and they're, and they're doing it very well. So there's a meeting back at the uh, complex, the uh, Calindo complex, and Miguel and the consigliere are talking, and Nestor shows up and he goes, look, we've analyzed the video and we've discovered uh, the music playing in the background. It's a street vendor in Mexico. And he's like, okay, good, pick him up. He's like, we already have. He's like, all right. So now, now they got the street vendor from the video that's playing in the background, and there's a big old meetup at the first place we meet the Mayans in episode one, which is like this warehouse slash factory. And they're down below, all the mines show up again, and the Galindo cartel has this street vendor tied up, and they're about to start torturing him. They want information. The street vendor basically, he asked him, like, who who did this? Who, who recorded this? It was just kids. It's all kids. He's like, it's kids that are doing it all. He's telling them the truth, but, you know, Miguel can't comprehend that kids would be doing all this, and doesn't. And he's not fully comprehending what these rebels are made of, and he doesn't realize that there are a bunch of kids that are doing this whole thing, and he's trying to tell these kids. So they take a boiling pot of hot water and pour it over him and just completely burn his body. I mean, just horribly burn him. And, and you know, this is already making easy crazy. And then at that moment... This is when they ratchet up a level. Out of nowhere, they bring the son of this street vendor, and now they're going to torture this kid. So they're about to start tying him up and go get a pot of water to tear him up. Out of nowhere, Angel's in the back of the crowd, breaks open his phone, acts like he gets a fake phone call. It's like, oh, oh we found the van, because he knows all the information. So he's trying to make sure that this kid doesn't get hurt at the same time while trying to help them out. He's like, oh, I, I, we found the station wagon. It, it's Dick's. He's like, all right, all right. So they end up not torturing the little boy. The, the mines go racing out to there, but um, Miguel tells Nestor, like, look, man, you need to go with them and uh, make sure that nothing else happens. So they all both go out to this ditch where this, uh, uh, you know, this um, station wagon is ditched in this hole. They go out there. They're all searching the car. There's some dogs around, and it looks like Nestor discovers something. He tells his guys, and they book out real fast. The mines are like, man, what the heck was that? Nestor didn't, he just booked out what he find and they turn over to the side and there's like three dogs he's like oh aren't those the dogs from uh wonderland they're like oh no so they i guess nestor discovered where these people where those guys come from and they were part of dogwood so they end up going back to wonderland this dog veterinary in this place and the the cartel's already there i think this is some really the way they edited this episode was really bad i mean it just cuts right to the things and it was kind of confusing so i will admit that they cut to uh wonderland and the cartel's already harassing the woman she's got them all hung up and they're harassing where are these people are i don't know anything and i don't know where the mines show up and the mines see that they're messing with their people and torturing them so the mines ain't having this so they all pull out their guns the cartel pulls out their guns and now you got this huge standoff and you got the Mayans on one side with their guns drawn. You got the cartel drawn with guns pulled. And they're all looking at each other. You got the president of the Mayans and the head of security, Nestor, looking at each other. And they're, and they're like, they both kind of tell them, like, no, no, not this way. They both put their guns away. And they're like, all right, go ahead. And it just turned into this big old brawl. And obviously, this thing was needed. They just start wailing on each other. So now you got Mayans versus cartel just beating the snot out of each other. And this is more of a tension fight. Because they're both under pressure from the leader, Miguel, because he's lost his son. So now each party is scared, and they have a lot of aggression built up from all this different nonsense that's been going on with the rebels, and they just beat the snot out of each other. Even Nestor and the president get a few shots in on each other. They kind of just look at each other like, all right, we cool, we cool, we good. And then they look around, and he's like, should we stop? He's like, nah, let him go. They need to get this out. All right, all right. So, you know, they just let them wear each other out and fight and get a brawl. Basically, get all that 
that junk they need out of them so they can all think straight. So you get this cool little cartel versus mine brawl, which is more of just a, you know, make sure we're all good kind of thing. All right, so after the big brawl, then we kick back to uh, Emily, and now she's back at the uh, Galindo uh, compound or whatever you want to call it, their house, and she's talking to Miguel, her husband, about not doing anything to retaliate against these rebels because she wants her son back. She's like, please, 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 I want our son back. Please don't retaliate. He's like, yeah, I know. I'm not going to do anything. Don't worry. She, oh, she feels better. But just right then, his consigliere comes in, and they have a meeting. And basically, the consigliere is like, look, man, uh, you need to do something about this because we're the cartel. And they took a page out of our book. They stole our, they stole your son. They burned money. They've done everything that we would do. You need to strike back. He's like, I can't strike back. My son's going to be hurt. He's like, look, I'm going to tell you something. He's like, this is something you don't know. He's like, your older brother was taken by your father's business partner and sold to the other cartel. And they tried to get him back and everything went haywire and he ended up being killed. And then you were born right afterwards because your, uh, your mom was pre three months pregnant and you were born. So they wrote it off as pneumonia. They're like, so unless you want these events to re reoccur, you need to do something about it. So what does Miguel do? Well, we kick back to Easy and uh, Angel and Coco and Gilly. And they're going in their little tunnel to go back to Mexico. They pass by one of the cartel guys and, he, and the son's there with his dad and he's just kind of burnt up, but he's there, he's fine. They pass by and they go into Mexico. They go meet up with the the, uh, the lady who's the leader of the rebels to, to discuss what to do about the son and if it's okay. She's like, look, the son's with us and we had to do this. This is part of the thing we had to do. We have him, don't worry, everything's fine. Everything's gonna be fine, he's fine, we're gonna take care of this. And he, he, you can tell Angel's not really so happy about this. At the same time, a huge scream lets out and they run over and bam, what do we find there? The street vendor and his son burnt alive with the notes stuffed in their mouth, cartel style, to teach a lesson to them. So basically, if they wage war back, they, you want to kill, you want to torture us, we're going to kill some of your own and we're going to show it out and put it on display. So now this war has completely escalated and has completely flipped out. And Emily can sense all this and can hear the different things. So what does she do? She goes running off to Easy and Felipe. So she calls Felipe, sets up a meet with Easy, and they have a private meeting now for the first time they reconnect. And basically she just goes to Easy like, what the heck is going on? I need the truth. He tells her his son is okay, he's alive, but he doesn't know anything else, and that there's something, and that there's way deeper stuff. She's like, look, I just need somebody on the inside that can tell me the truth, that can help me. So now, easiest task with helping out his ex-love Emily and trying to find the kid and in the middle of this whole war between the Mayans and the cartel and the Mayans and the rebels I mean it's just a big old mash in the middle and now Easy's even deeper because he's basically promising Emily that he's going to help her out and take care of everything so man that just gets even deeper and then just to top it all off the last scene of the whole show of the episode is we see Coco cruising the streets and you see all the different street walkers, you know, ladies trying to make their money late at night, what you want to call them. And uh, he rolls up on one. He's like, hey, you get in the car. And, she, you know, you're like, OK. She's like, oh, it must be something special. He goes, look, mom, I ain't got time to talk. Just get in the car. And you're like, oh, snap. So I think there's something way more about this young girl that we don't know. Maybe this is his daughter. Don't know. Don't know. Could be more. But he picks up his mom who obviously is a streetwalker prostitute and does bad things. So there are obviously some history. So this is obviously going to get unfolded more. But the bigger things are, Easy is knee deep in this now. He's trying to be good and be good with the DEA, but now he's even more tied in because Emily has personally come to him to try to help out to find her son. Woo! That was just episode two, folks. So we got a deeper dive into the whole kidnapping, the inner workings of it, and just now. So now the kidnapping is in full force. The rebels in the cartel are 100% at war with each other. The Mayans are in the middle and are split down the middle because they don't know that they got one on the rebels and one with the cartel. So this is going to be a mess. I definitely feel like one or two people are dying somewhere in the middle of this show, like around six or seven episodes. There's going to be some deaths and some wildness. Well, there you go, folks. There is episode two, a scorpion of Mayans MC. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me this week. I'll be back again for episode three. Check for it real soon. Until next time, folks. Good night, Ted.